So I want to continue on tonight as we look at sanctification. We'll bounce back for just a bit. Uh, so I want to a couple of things I feel is important. And then I want to look a little bit at what we really closed and talking about last week because I thought it was very noteworthy as we look at, um, you know, I think she Gina had brought about and we kind of elaborated a little bit, that when we get saved, we are uh, cleansed and we are purified and we should be striving to walk in a walk of holiness and righteousness and a walk of sanctification. But what does that mean, sanctification, versus what our personality is? We want to look at that for a few moments this evening. And uh, uh, I, 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 I won't exhaust it. I'm not the professional on personality. Um, I, I, but, but I want to look at it. And so we've been looking at that word uh, sanctification that um, the word in the original Latin sanctus uh, meaning holy uh, 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 in its definition and then you have the word shun to it which means a process of being holy. So we've talked a great deal about um, the, the, uh, the position that we are in as believers, that we are instantaneously cleansed and purified when we are saved, but then we continue in a walk of sanctification and purification after we are saved. That's the, work that, uh, that's the word that, that, that most churches don't preach or teach about today. That, that uh, you know, once you are saved, you, you continue in that walk with Christ. And where a worship is not just getting saved and staying where you're at, but, but it's, it, it's, it's hungering and longing after Jesus Christ in a walk of sanctification. So it's, it's progressive holiness. And we ask, how long does it take for us to live a holiness life? It'll take a lifetime. It will take until you and I die as we progress in this walk of holiness. It, it, it takes a life. And so that, that, that shouldn't be overwhelming, but really that should be soul satisfied. That I have a lifetime, not that we procrastinate, but that we spend our life perfecting Jesus Christ in us. And so we, we looked in great detail of men in the Bible who, who showed us sanctification. I believe it was two weeks ago we looked at Joseph and uh, his life of, of sanctification. How that his brothers did despise what God had spoke to his heart and gave him a vision of doing. Don't think that everybody's going to buy into your vision when you cast it. We would love for it to be that way. But not everybody's spiritually in the place that they need to be with God. And there can be jealousy. There can be uh, 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 just divisions that come against the vision that God gives you. Uh, but, but it's your responsibility to control what you will do even when you're mistreated in life. Whether you're mistreated by other people or sometimes I believe that all of us can have a sense of feeling that we've been mistreated by God. I believe you talk to anybody. Um, I think, well, you know, there's a depth of Christianity that, that, that you know, that, that we begin to understand God more. But, 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 but some folks can, can really feel like God, God has, has forsaken them or not heard their prayer or, or, or God hasn't worked for them. So, so what are we going to do when people come against us? What are we going to do when, 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 when we feel like things aren't working out the way that we thought God was going to work them? Well, Joseph is an example that, that we're going to be faithful to what God has called us to. And faithfulness to God definitely brings promotion and elevation. And we find that Joseph is given that position of elevation once again when he's faithful to the things of God. Even when he's sold as a slave and Potiphar buys him, second command in the kingdom of Egypt, right underneath of Pharaoh, is Potiphar. And, and Potiphar puts Joseph in charge of his whole house. And the only thing he keeps back from him is, is, is his wife because that's the right and the proper thing to do do. But we know that Joseph was a, a, a stunningly attractive man. Uh, uh, his character probably made him this way. Uh, but his looks as well. God had blessed him. And, and, and so Potiphar's wife, uh, tradition says, had women over. They thought that he was an angel because of who he looked, of the, the way he looked, and, and the way that he was. And Potiphar's wife wanted to lie with him. And so she devised everything for everybody to be out of the house. The enemy knows how to clear
clear things out of the way, amen, to ruin the child of God. Amen. But, but here is Joseph, and it's not the first time he leaves his coat, but he takes off. He says, you can have my coat, but you cannot have my character. Amen. Uh, people can say a lot of things about you. They can even destroy your reputation, but they will not destroy your character unless you allow it. Amen. You hear me? No one wants their reputation destroyed. No one wants something that they worked hard at destroyed. But even if someone destroys your reputation, they cannot destroy your character. So here it is, Joseph showing a life of sanctification that his character was going to be right before God, even if others came against him. And so we find that in the story that uh, from beginning to end that, that Joseph really is a type of Christ, but he is a model of sanctification for us. We looked at and we looked at, at Saul or Paul. We looked at David. We looked at, at Peter particularly. We looked at him and, and, and his life and how that God definitely changed Peter. This enthusiastic, well-intentioned, but locked insight. Did it mean that just because Peter got saved and, and, and the work of the Holy Ghost began to happen in Peter's life, that, that, that he still didn't have enthusiasm? No, I believe he had enthusiasm. But I believe that the Spirit of God imparted wisdom to him. We find this man who, 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 is, who is bold. Amen. He's still bold. And maybe he's still somewhat brash, but he's, he's worked it out. This, his brashness, his boldness is used for the kingdom of God. And there's maybe even times in his life that we're not all familiar with, but maybe there was times where he was. Uh, timid, even though uh, he was bold. Uh, but those are all character traits of him. And so we, we, we will look at how the Lord transformed him into a giant. So when you look at your life, amen, understand this, that God can take all those weak things of your life, we're going to talk more about them in just a few moments, God can take all those things and He can transform them. And he can take who you are because he made us all individuals. We're all made after the image of God, but we're all different than God. I mean, my, look at Moses and look at David, look at Abraham, look at Samuel, uh, look at men uh, uh, throughout the Word of God. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, look at uh, Jeremiah, look at Ezekiel, look at those prophets that were used. All so different. Yet God used their personalities. It's interesting. You know, thankfully, I'm here long enough that I don't live in the shadow of any pastor, although maybe in some people's eyes I do, but for most, it's a new generation, and they don't remember those pastors as many years ago. So my personality is different than other pastors. And uh, if, it, if the Lord, you know, someday it continues to tarry and I'm moved on from the scene, you know, whoever takes the pastor of America Revival Church won't pastor like I pastor. You know why? Because my preaching brings my personality with it. Everybody's preaching will bring their personality and who they are with it. It doesn't change the Word of God, but the presentation will be different. I'm, I'm by nature not a, 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 a screaming, a <gasps> you know, the type. That's just not me. I don't. I don't care for that. I don't, that's not me. I'm not going to do that. Other people might. Uh, other people might have your laughing and stitches and then pop you with the truth. I'm, you know, probably don't present with that humor uh, that way. Everybody's different. But it's God's using personality. But, uh, so I want to look at that a little bit this evening. So even though we still have our personality, what does it mean to be sanctified? What does it mean to be holy? What does it mean to be pure? What does it mean to be in that process of sanctification? So let's let's look at that a little bit this evening, if we can. So one thing that is for certain is that we will be changed at salvation. Amen. We will be changed at salvation. Um, God, the Bible says, is not willing that any should be lost, but that all should come to repentance. God is going to change us when He saves us. Amen. His power is going to change us. Uh, but but, but our, our personalities, our sense of humor, our, 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 our natural...
qualities that we have that God has created. What He's going to do in those qualities is He's going to say, I'm going to take these qualities and I'm going to make them like Christ. So maybe where your humor was maybe not pleasing to Christ, now your humor will glorify God in, in the way that you present. You still may be funny, but it's not going to be telling stories that are off color or isn't pleasing to the kingdom of God. Amen. Uh, you, uh, our, our personalities. So regardless of what personality that we have, amen, uh, if, if something in our life it, 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 it doesn't line up with Christ, amen, and isn't pure, we've got to change. You know, God, God help us that we change. Turn with me to the book of Romans. I'm going to look at several scriptures tonight. I'm going to ask you to turn with me, if you will, to these scriptures so that we can look at them. Romans chapter number uh, 7 and verse number 21. I'll let someone read it, then I'm going to kind of dissect it a little bit, if we can. Romans 7, 21. If I am not a law, Okay, I find then a law. It doesn't refer to the law uh, that maybe some would think of the law of Moses, the Ten Commandments, but what, what law do you think may be referring to? The law of uh, sin and death. So we have this law that, that we, we were born into sin, and we, we bear the curse of sin, we're going to die because of that. Uh, that's why we'll physically die, but we don't have to spiritually die because of that. So uh, then uh, a law, uh, uh, and, and we can look at Romans 8, 2, uh, for the law uh, of the Spirit is life in Christ Jesus. He has made us free from the law of death and sin. The law of death and sin. Uh, so, so sin, its nature, destroys and it kills. And so uh, I find that the law that when I would do good, evil or the evil nature is present with me. Now let me ask you a question. How many of you, and don't raise your hand, I want to be tricky, I want you to think about this. How many of you, when you got saved, uh, all of a sudden, that nature of evil is going away. You've never been tempted to lie. You've never been tempted to, to, to have a bad attitude. You've never been tempted to be jealous. You've never been tempted to covet. Has any of you ever struggled with those things? Even after you're saved? Yes. Yes. We all will still struggle with the, 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 the law that though we want to do good, that evil still seems to be present in us. So Mother Eli, you said, well, I never, I never cussed, you know, uh, because, you know, you, you, you purged yourself to the power of the blood of Jesus Christ from that type of life. Which is there what you brought up too? So, but, but, but we continue to progressively through the Spirit purge ourselves from the struggle of the nature of sin that we were born into. We are going to wrestle against temptation till the day that we die. And if anyone in here says, well, well, I, I, don't, I don't have temptation. Well, you're kidding yourself. Yeah. And I'll tell you the second thing. All the folks that I knew that ever said that, most of them really aren't a good statement today. Yeah. The reality is, is that we will struggle. We will struggle with the flesh till the day we die. I don't struggle with drinking beer. I don't even struggle with drinking alcohol. There are a lot, a lot of crazy things that I don't struggle with, but there are things of attitude that sometimes I have to be careful with the human nature that wants to come out that is not pleasing to God. That is the life of sanctification. And I can't say, oh, well, that's my personality. That's my person. We may be predispositioned to things, but it doesn't allow us to live in a place that our personalities can harbor things that are unpleasing to 
God in our life. So if there are some folks that struggle with being offended easily, maybe that's part of your makeup and who you are. But that will change. That will change in the presence of God. And as you continually and progressively work on it. Those aren't personality traits that God doesn't want to change. But that's a sin nature. That's a sin nature. So, uh, it's not natural for us to respond to our situations with anything other than the purity that is found in Jesus Christ. You know, I know that there are some people that can be sarcastic. And I've met some people with a dry sense of humor, and they are funny. Funny. I mean, they can just crack it, and they can just keep them rolling. I mean, it just seems like it comes right on, and they can roll with it. They can, they can, they can be funny without even, without even thinking about it. I have to think too hard about it. <laughs> but there are some people that don't think. I mean, it just rolls right from them. But I wonder if that sarcasm doesn't need to be purified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because sarcasm sometimes, uh, uh, you know, uh, though I believe it can be harmless, I believe that it can also be driven by con uh, contempt um, by, by our feelings toward others that can be unpure. Or by our feelings, fear of, of man or uh, anxiety, or because of pride, or because of impurities, or because of jealousy, or because of selfishness. And the, this is, I'm just taking one example and saying, you can use this on a multitude of things. So your personality can be something, but you need to make sure that your personality is driven by purity that comes from the power of Jesus Christ. And so, let's look at, uh, we, we, we did look at Romans uh, 7.21, Know this, that, that our, 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 person, our, our, our personalities need to not be tendencies that come from the flesh or from sin. The Bible tells us that because of the, uh, the, 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 the result of the fall, that Adam and Eve, they disobeyed, and sin then poisoned their human nature. And so when we look at this mankind, lust and, and corrupt desires of the flesh, uh, 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 sin, uh, it really gains the upper hand on man. And so we have to be sanctified by the power of God. Let's read it. So one turn. Genesis chapter number 6, verse number 5. Genesis 6, 5. So God looks down and He sees, man, man, they're wicked. Why? Because of sin, the fall of man. And, and, and sin gets the upper hand. Do you know, when we're dealing with a world that is lost and doesn't know Jesus Christ, we have to understand that sin has the upper hand. And even as the days grow closer to the coming of Jesus Christ, the Word of God reminds us that it's going to continually get wicked. And so a sin definitely has the upper hand. And, and we can love our loved ones with all of our heart. But if they don't know Jesus, their life is lived by the upper hand of sin that gets the best of them. And God looked down and He saw that sin had the best of men. And, and, and their conscience, their thoughts was continued. Continual evil continually, the Bible says. And so when God saw us, He saw our, our, our thought process, it was contaminated by sin. We live in this world, but God commands us not to be of this world. We are sojourners. We are strangers. We are just passing through. This is not our home. We have to be men and women like Abraham, knowing that we're looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. We have to put our faith and our confidence in God and we have to let our mind be renewed daily by the Word of God and the power of God. That is why it's important for us to live godly lives. That's why it's important for us to do things 
things that help us meditate upon the Word of God, be in the Word of God, and, uh, uh, things that, that build the Word of God, relationships in church, the music that we listen to, all those things are so important in our lives that we have the Word of God so that sin doesn't have the upper hand. And so here it is, amen, that, that, that we see that, 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 that sin definitely has the upper hand because of the fall. But the good news is this, that God said, I want to make a way of escape, that sin no longer has the upper hand upon mankind. And He made a way for all mankind to be able to be relieved from this oppression of the hand of wickedness and sin that was so strong in the lives of mankind because of the fall in the Garden of Eden. And so uh, the sin nature that, 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 that our bodies were born into, we have to overcome by the power of the Spirit. And so let's turn to 1 John chapter number 5. Did I write this down right? I'm going to have to look at the Scripture. I can't tell if I wrote a 5 or a 3. It's a 3. Let's do, turn to 1 John 3, 3. So I want to read that tonight. This is great. Remember what we're talking about, our personalities, you know, who we are, what makes us, what makes us distinct, how God has created us. So as we look at that, still letting the power of the Holy Ghost get into every nook and cranny of our life, and our personalities aren't changed, but everything about our personalities and who we are, we are purified because we're a product of the fall. We have the upper hand of sin that is trying to work in our life, but we've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Every man has the opportunity. We are not predestined. Amen. Uh, God predestined that all should be saved. God is not willing that any should perish. God's design is that everyone will be saved, but mankind has a choice. And so he chooses if he'll accept the work of Jesus Christ upon the cross. Sister Rachel, you read, and every man who has this hope in him, what is the greatest hope that we have within us? Eternal life through Jesus Christ. Eternal life through Jesus Christ. And I think that we can narrow it down to say a hope of a resurrection. Because he resurrected, we believe in that. We have hope of a resurrection as well. Because we're resurrected in newness of life. Amen. Our spirit is. It was dead. Amen. We're going to be resurrected in newness of life someday. Amen. When this body is laid to rest. So every man who has this hope, the power of the resurrection in him. Amen. Eternal life. Salvation. The Bible says he does what? Purifies he purifies himself. What is that? That is the act of sanctification. Remember we talked about holiness uh, and we talked about purity. The, 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 the Latin word sanctus, to be holy, to be pure. The word shun added on to that. The process of being holy and pure. And so in our life, we are going to continue to work at that process of being holy and pure for sanctification to happen. We may have been saved 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years ago, but and the work of sanctification is still happening in our life because we hold to the hope of Jesus Christ and anyone who holds to that hope purifies himself. So every area of your personality, if you are driven, your drivenness or it's going to be because of uh, 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 the purity of Christ. If you're laid back in your nature and your laid backness and you're relaxing, is going to be because you're relaxing in Jesus Christ and trusting Him. So everything about us Amen. We allow the presence of God to get in and we purify ourselves. If we love and want to be like Christ, we will cleanse ourselves. Anything that goes against God's perfect will, we will cleanse ourselves. Someone read 1 Peter, 1 Peter 1.22. Seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit under unstained love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart, fervent. Amen. So what's Peter saying here? He said, Who purifies our soul? Seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit under unstained love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart, fervent. 
She, you, have purified your souls. Having purified your soul, the work of sanctification. Obeying what is the truth, the scripture. We find the truth of God's word and we apply it to our life so that every area of our life is purified. Once again, he won't change our personality, but we will allow God to get in every nook and cranny of our life and change us. And as Christ it, uh, was holy, we should be holy. Listen, we shouldn't show anything as an excuse for sin to be in our lives. Nothing. You may say, oh, well, that's my personality. Well, you need to let Jesus in your personality. Amen. You need to let the power of the Holy Ghost in there. Right. You need to wash yourself with the Word of God. Yeah. So I want to read Hebrews 4.12. Very familiar with the passage of Scripture. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and stronger than any good sword, piercing even to the divine thunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints marrow, and is the center of the thoughts and the tents of the heart. Okay, so let me just say this very, very quick because I still have a lot I want to say. Listen to this. So it is a progressive word of sanctification. It is an active, it's an ongoing process. And so how do we do it? I just said through the Word of God. So I wanted to back it up to Scripture. The Bible says that the Word of God is quick. What does that word quick mean? I've said it a million times here. What does it mean? A lot. So it's a lot. So we want to be progressive and moving in action. Well, the Word of God is a lot. It can work with us. The Bible says it's powerful. That word powerful means active or energizing. And so if it's a progressive going work, to be alive, to be powerful, to be energizing. That's what we need for this work of sanctification. The Bible oh, says it's, it's a two edged sword. What does that mean? Well, if you are going to be uh, have surgery, if something's going to be done with you, you want something that's sharp. It gets in there and it probes. Amen. We need to allow the Word of God to probe in our life, every area of our life. Uh, what you may need may be different than what I need at this moment, but in my personality and where I am in my walk with Christ, I need the Word of God to probe around there. And the Bible says uh, that the piercing even of the body of the Son of the soul, and, 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 and it goes on down to say it's a deserter of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You know what it does? It is a sifter. It is an analyzer. It can analyze you. How many of you, uh, you know uh, uh, the, the, these uh, the, these oil ladies, uh, this new terror, you can hold this little thing and can analyze you, tell you what, what oils you need for your system. You can go to down to see me at the health center. I'll draw some blood from you. They'll analyze you, tell you if there's something that you need in your, in your system to balance things out. Do you know what? The Word of God does it for spiritually. It's our analyzer. So it should be changing us. Even aspects of our personality to make us more like Christ. Let me just share a few things here. Sorry, I, I, I'm relying upon my phone. Some things that I have on here. Here's some, here's some different personalities. The duty fulfillment. Serious and quiet. Interested in security and peaceful living. Is there anything wrong with that? No. Some people, that is their personality. The mechanic. Quiet. Reserved. Interested in how things work. That's good. Not all of us are like that. God makes us different. The artist. Quiet. Serious. Sensitive. Kind. Doesn't like conflict and, 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 and is faithful and loyal. Extremely well developed senses. Uh, uh, the protector, quiet, forceful, or, uh, original, sensitive. Uh, uh, the idealistic, quiet, reflective, idealistic, uh, interested in serving uh, humanity. Uh, then we have the thinker, the logical person, the original, creative ideas. Uh, uh, likes to come up with good theories and ideas. The guardian, practical, traditional, uh, organized, uh, likely to be athletic. Not everybody is athletic. 
Uh, 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 then we have the inspired, someone who's enthusiastic, idealistic, creative, almost uh, able to do anything that, 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 that interests them, uh, great skills, uh, uh, the giver, popular, sensitive, outgoing uh, uh, people skills, uh, uh, externally focused. Not everyone is going to be external. I am a people person. That is one of my skills. I love people. I'm very outgoing. I'm very engaging. Not everybody's like that. It's okay. A visionary, creative, resourceful, uh, intellectually quick. Uh, then you have the, the executive, the conservative, or the outspoken. They are driven to lead. Excellent ability to, to understand difficult organizational problems problems and create solid solutions. Not everybody's able to do that. So what am I saying tonight? That we are all different. God doesn't take and, and I, I don't want to bring this back. I want to bring this back. You know, I, I, I thank God for my wife I shared with the with Pastor Blitz and Blanche. She's here tonight. I'm faithful. Uh, but, but you know, she, she engaged me in a, in a conversation a couple of weeks ago, Sister Tina, where your question last week brought us to where we are this week, but it's because of my wife. She said, you know, I, 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 I think oftentimes in the Christian realm, we think that all women need to be this meek, quiet, never speak out person, and we stereotype when we have not, never allow them to be true to who they are. Now, if you are that way, that's good and that's wonderful. But so, and I, you can still be meek, and you can be a lady, but you can be driven with purpose. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing. But Brother Eli, that's who God made you to be. But your responsibility is to allow God to get in that personality like my responsibility is and sanctify me. But be comfortable in the skin of who I am. No one should go out of here feeling like, oh, I'm less than, I'm not. If God made you who you are, you better be thankful for who you are. And never use your personality to harbor sin, but to allow the Holy Ghost and the Word of God to get every different in your personality and be who God wants you to be. Sometimes God, sometimes God will ask us, to step outside the garments of our personality and function in certain things that we're not necessarily uh, comfortable with. Yeah. And I agree with everything you're saying. <clears throat> but I remember when I was in Bible school, I was prompted during spiritual illnesses to dance in the spirit. And I'm not even good at dancing in the flesh. <laughs> and I, 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 uh, Really thought that it was on Monday morning, and we had services Monday. We had services Monday through Friday morning and evening during spiritual emphasis and there were no classes that week. And I approached Brother Bunny and I told him, like, I was hoping he was going to say, "You know, behave yourself." Don't. Say somebody's operating in some personality there, but, <laughs> but I, I really expect him to say that. Instead, he told me, he "said I want you to pray for each service." that God would help you be obedient to what he's telling you. Yeah. And I'll tell you what happened. It's Thursday evening when the teller was preaching. And the only time in all my years of Christianity did I ever see a preacher not get to finish his message because the Holy Ghost Praise God. And, uh, and when he prompted me, I took my glasses off, put them in my pocket, stepped on the other side of the kitty, shut my eyes and just went. Praise God. But what a release that came. I haven't danced since then. And another thing, each is own. I'm, I'm not open to it. Well, I'm open to it, but I, I don't need to fall on the floor. I pray for a lot of people that fell on the floor. But when I've been prayed for and I've had the power, God hit me that strong. I look for a place to sit because big guys don't fall gracefully. <laughs> And, uh, but sometimes God will ask us to function in something temporarily. He may prompt you, if you're shy, 
to actually be bold and be an extrovert and approach somebody you don't even know. So we have to be open to those things. Amen. But for the main, your main function, I believe that God, you know, what is personality? Personality is intellect, emotion, and will. And everybody has intellect, emotion, and will. But one of those three, you you excel in one of those three more than the others. And that's where you're going to be functioning, even with the gifts of the Spirit. I believe that. And I, and I appreciate what you said. Sometimes God may have us step out of who we are to be who He needs us to be. Now, I'm not saying that, it, as Brother David said, you know, in our life, um, I, I think one of the greatest things that helped me understand this is, is my wife and I are different, not just man and woman, but our personalities. And then I look at my children, and my girls are very different in their personalities. Yeah. It's not my job to, 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 to want them to be someone who, well, God didn't create them to be. I mean, it's my job to raise them to fear God and to apply the Word of God to them. Now, I'm not talking about their sin nature that, that is natural and will naturally have the upper hand. I'm talking about just personality traits. Who they are. I believe that we have to truly allow the Holy Ghost to work in us. If you're humorous, you can still be humorous. Or you can be a sanctified humorous. And if you're intellectual, well, you can still be intellectual. But your mind has been changed by the Spirit. Any questions? Any thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of times he uh, does that to bring us out of our, he get to, I guess he gets us out of our comfort zone just to see if we'll be obedient sometimes. Absolutely. Because I think that's the only way you can really find out sometimes if we will be obedient to his voice. I mean, a lot of times we say, test us, you know, like, you know, you know we want, you know, and then, so I think a lot of times it's like, he's like, okay, we'll see once, you know, you see if you're going to be all talking good. Say you're going to do my will or you're going to really do it, you know. I agree. You know, it's, it's interesting to me as I look at people like Moses. Like, he was an amazing leader. But he said, God, I'm not a gifted person. But I don't see Moses being like Peter or Paul. Or Daniel, that he was dead. But God made each of them different. But they functioned in the love and the power of God. And the love of God comes all over them. It, it's a different. You know, they're not the same anymore. That's right. Now, I think there are some things that are inherited. You know, sometimes I've seen folks say, well, I want to grow because my mama and my grandma. Well, first of all, I would call that a generational curse. Yeah, yeah. break that curse. Exactly. Yeah, God can break that. Absolutely. That's not a personality. That is the upper hand of sin having its way from generation to generation where God's design is not for that to be. That makes as much sense as if your mom and dad jumped off the cliff, you're going to jump off the cliff too, you know? That's right. Okay. No longer shall they say in Israel, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Amen. In my heart, they can fall. That's right. That's right. I don't like the fall part. Part of the name part. Yeah, that's right. What do you all think of that? I mean, this has been interesting to me. Some other thoughts. Sister Rachel. 